Hare Krishna, everybody. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. And there's never been a time, actually, at least in our memory, uh, that these readings are as important as they are today. Because this pandemic is really, really serious. It's getting to the point where uh, doctors are going to have to decide uh, to who, who, who to give the beds to or who to give the ventilators to, who to give the medicine to, because they're not going to have enough. Especially in places like America, they're supposed to be the most opulent, wealthy, etc., etc. And because of such gross mismanagement. And now we hear about this in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 12th canto, um, some of you may have remember that the description of as the Kali Yuga progresses, uh, the leaders become plunderers of the people. They don't actually care about the citizens because they're not, they're so far in ignorance and, and away from Krishna consciousness. So, even those of us who are devotees, <clears throat> we must hear regularly uh, among ourselves the Bhagavatam, especially, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, and the Gita, uh, but especially the Bhagavatam. Um, from the proper source, in order to be able to be empowered to keep ourselves steady and uh, relatively unaffected internally in the midst of this firestorm that has uh, engulfed the world. The world will never be the same after this. It's that heavy. Or if it will, it will take 50, 100 years to get back to the same state. Possible. It's possible. <clears throat> okay, with that introduction, I'm just trying to give us more gravity and more seriousness to take shelter of Krishna. And the way to take shelter of Krishna is to get an attachment for Krishna. And you get attachment for Krishna by associating with Krishna. And now it's so serious, all the temples have shut down and you can't even go to see the de deities, which are the which is most important for householders and neophytes. But advanced devotees take shelter of the holy name and uh, the association of advanced devotees and the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. So here we are together. Again, I'm so grateful. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram spoken by, compiled by Srila Sanatana Goswami, who, by the way, was the equivalent of a prime minister of a state or a country uh, underneath the uh, emperorship of the king or emperor, uh, the Muslim ruler, Nawab Shah, <coughs> Nawab Hussein Shah. <coughs> and he gave it all up. He was as opulent as the king of heaven. And he gave it all up to join Lord Chaitanya. <coughs> and he lived in Vrindavan with just one piece of cloth and lived underneath the tree every night practically uh, just to fulfill the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the order of the spiritual master is the life and soul of the disciple. Uh, so this is Prabhupada's <clears throat> desire and order that we associate with him through these books. And Sanatana Goswami is teaching us what the Bhagavatam is so that we can more deeply relate and take shelter of the Bhagavatam. So, Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram goes like this. 
sarvasya shabdish piyusha sarva vedaika satpala sarva siddhanta ratnaja sarva lokaika drik prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths you are the only giver of sight to all the world sarva bhagavata prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kalidvan Dodita Ditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavata You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali You are the exact image of Sri Krishna Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Shri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Mat Sangin Mad Guru Mad Mahadana Manistadaga Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chochata kada hanamun chagadachin mam prem narit kanta O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, Please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the... Uh, 20, 20th chapter of the 11th canto. Uh, we're in the middle of the Uddhava Gita in which Krishna explains so many things, practically everything, to Uddhava. And the name, name of this chapter is Pure Devotional Surface Surpasses Knowledge and Detachment. In this way, showing us uh, what the goal is. Uh, and we're beginning with text 23. He's explaining to Arjuna how to understand the seeming contradiction that the, the Vedas are the laws of God and at the same time he's explaining <clears throat> that we have to rise above the Vedas. <clears throat> there are no Vedas in Goloka. In Goloka, everyone spontaneously and instinctively and intuitively know what to do and know what not to do at every moment. And everything that they need is given to them at every moment. Why? Because all they think about is pleasing Krishna. Text 23. When a person is disgusted with the temporary illusory nature of this world and is thus detached from it <clears throat> his mind guided by the instructions of his spiritual master considers again and again the nature of this world and eventually gives up the false identification with matter purport although it is difficult to control the mind by constant practice, the mind can be spiritualized in Krishna consciousness. A sincere disciple constantly remembers the instructions of his spiritual master and thereby faces again and again the stark truth that the material world is not the ultimate reality. By detachment, and perseverance, 
the mind gradually gives up its propensity towards sense gratification. Thus, illusion loses its grip on a sincere Krishna conscious devotee. Gradually, the purified mind completely gives up the false identification with this world and transfers its attention to the spiritual platform. Then, one is considered to be perfect in the yoga system. 24. Through the various disciplinary regulations and the purificatory procedures of the yoga system, through logic and spiritual education, or through worship and adoration of me, one should constantly engage his mind in remembering the Personality of Godhead, the goal of yoga. No other means should be employed for this purpose. Purport The word Ba is significant in this verse, for it indicates that one engaged <coughs> in the worship and adoration of the Personality of Godhead need not trouble himself with the disciplinary, regulatory, and purificatory procedures of yoga, nor with the grueling intricacies of Vedic studies and logic. Yogyam, or the most appropriate object of meditation, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as confirmed throughout the Vedic literature. One who directly takes to the worship of the Lord should not employ other methods. For full dependence on the Lord is in itself the supreme process of perfection. Text 25 If, because of momentary inattention, a yogi accidentally commits an abominable activity, then by the very practice of yoga he should burn to ashes the sinful reaction without at any time employing any other procedure. Purport <clears throat> The word yogena here indicates jnanena yogena and bhaktya yogena. Since these two transcendental systems have the power to burn sinful reactions to ashes. It should be clearly understood that the word angsa, anghas, or sin, here refers to an accidental fall down against one's desire. Premeditated exploitation of the mercy of the Lord can never be excused. Significantly, the Lord forbids any extraneous purificatory rites since the transcendental yoga systems are themselves the most purifying processes, especially bhakti yoga. If one gives up one's regular prescribed duties to perform a special ritual or penance, trying to purify a sinful reaction, then one will be guilty of the additional fault of giving up one's prescribed duties. One should pick oneself up from an accidental fall down and go on vigorously with one's prescribed duties in life without being unnecessarily discouraged. One should certainly, certainly lament and feel ashamed or, or there will be no purification. However, if one becomes overly depressed at an accidental fall down, one will not have the enthusiasm to go on to perfection. Lord Krishna also states <clears throat> in the Bhagavad Gita 9.30 Apichet sudurachado bhajate mamananyabhak Sadureva samanta vyak samyag vyabasito isaha. <clears throat> 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 
even if one commits the most abominable actions. If he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated. The most important point, and in the Bhagavad Gita translation, Prabhupada adds the words, in his determination. He is properly situated in his determination. The most important point is that one should be properly engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, for then the Lord will excuse and purify an accidental fall down. One should, one should, however, be most cautious to avoid such an unhappy event. 26. It is firmly declared that the steady adherence of transcendentalists to their respective spiritual positions constitutes real piety and that sin occurs when a transcendentalist neglects his prescribed duty. One who adopts this standard of piety and sin, sincerely desiring to give up all past association with sense gratification, <clears throat> is able to subdue materialistic activities which are by nature impure. Purport. Lord Krishna here explains more clearly that those persons directly engaged in self-realization either through jnana yoga or bhakti yoga need not give up their regular duties and perform special penances to atone for an accidental fall down. The actual purpose of Vedic literature <clears throat> is to direct one back home back to Godhead and not to encourage material sense gratification. Although the Vedas recommend innumerable rituals for promotion to heavenly planets and enjoyment of all varieties of material opulence, such materialistic rewards are meant only to engage materialistic people who otherwise would become demoniac. To purify an accidental fall-down, one who is engaged in transcendental realization need not adopt any procedure below, beyond his own spiritual practice. The words sanganam kyajanech chaya indicate that one should not practice Krishna consciousness or self-realization superficially or casually. Rather, one should sincerely and earnestly desire freedom from one's past sinful life. Similarly, the words ya nishta indicate that one must constantly practice Krishna consciousness. Thus, essential piety is to give up material sense gratification and engage in the loving, devotion, the loving service of the Lord. One who engages his senses, mind and intelligence 24 hours a day in the Lord's service is the most pious person and the Lord personally protects such a surrendered soul. What, can I, what more can you say? <laughs> you want to be enthused, you want to be happy, you want to be fearless. This is the way. <clears throat> even in the midst of this pandemic. <clears throat> mm. This is 26 to 28, 27 to 28. <clears throat> Having awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment, my, my devotee 
should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely repents such activities. This is one of the most important verses. I'll read the Sanskrit. Jata shadho matkata su nirvina sarva karma su veda dukatmakan kaman paritjage pinishwadaha tato bajeta mam prita shadala yur shadal lur dridanishchayaha jushamanash chetan kaman duko darkans Jagari Hayan. I'll read it again. Having awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment, my devotee should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely repents such activities. PURPORT <clears throat> The beginning stage of pure devotional service is, to, is described here by the Lord. A sincere devotee has practically seen that all material activities lead only to sense gratification and all sense gratification leads only to misery. Thus, a devotee's sincere desire is to engage 24 hours a day in the loving service of Lord Krishna without any personal motivation. The devotee sincerely desires to be established in his constitutional position as the Lord's eternal servitor. And he prays to the Lord to elevate himself to this exalted position. The word Anishwara indicates that because of one's past sinful activities and bad habits, one may not immediately be able to completely extinguish the enjoying spirit. The Lord here encourages such a devotee not to be overly depressed or morose, but to remain enthusiastic and to go on with His loving service. The word nirvina indicates that a sincere devotee, although somewhat entangled in the remnants of sense gratification, is completely disgusted with material life and under no circumstances willingly commits sinful activities. In fact, he avoids every kind of materialistic activity. The word kāman basically refers to sex attraction and its byproducts in the form of children, home, and so forth. Within the material world, the sex impulse is so strong that even a sincere candidate in the loving service of the Lord may sometimes be disturbed by sex attraction or lingering sentiments for wife and children. A pure devotee certainly feels spiritual affection for all living entities, including the so-called wife and children. But he knows that materially, material bodily attraction leads to no good, for it simply entangles one in one's so-called relatives in, the, in a miserable chain reaction, in a miserable chain reaction of fruitive activities. The word dridha, nishchaya, steadfast conviction, indicates that in any circumstance a devotee is completely determined to go on with his prescribed duties for Krishna. Thus he thinks, by my previous shameful life, my heart is polluted with many illusory attachments. Personally, I have no power to stop them. Only Lord Krishna within my heart can remove 
such inauspicious contamination. But whether the Lord removes such attachments immediately <clears throat> or lets me go on being afflicted by them, I will never give up my devotional service to Him. Even if the Lord places millions of obstacles in my path, and even if because of my offenses I go to hell, I will never for a moment stop serving the Lord Krishna. I am not interested in mental speculation and fruitive activities. Even if Lord Brahma personally comes before me, offering me such engagements, I will not be even slightly interested. Although I am attached to material things, I can see very clearly that they lead to no good because they simply give me trouble and disturb my devotional service to the Lord. Therefore, I sincerely repent my foolish attachments to so many material things and I am patiently awaiting Lord Krishna's mercy. The word prita indicates that a devotee feels exactly like the son or subject of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and is very attached to his relationship with the Lord. Therefore, although sincerely lamenting occasional lapses and into sense gratification so therefore although sincerely lamenting occasional lapses into sense enjoyment he never gives up his enthusiasm to serve Lord Krishna if a devotee becomes too morose or discouraged in devotional service he may drift into an impersonal consciousness or give up his devotional service to the Lord the Lord here advises that one should sincerely repent. He should not become chronically depressed. One should understand that because of his past sins, he must occasionally suffer disturbances from the material mind and senses. But one should not, therefore, become a devotee of detachment as do the speculative philosophers, the speculative philosophers. <clears throat> although one may desire attachment, detachment, <clears throat> although one may desire detachment to purify one's devotional service to the Lord, if one becomes more concerned with renunciation than with acting for the pleasure of the Lord of Lord Krishna, he is misunderstanding the position of loving devotional service. Faith in Lord Krishna is so powerful that in due course of time it will automatically award detachment and perfect knowledge. If one gives up Lord Krishna as the central object of one's worship and concentrates more on knowledge and detachment, one will become deviated from one's progress in going back home, back to Godhead. A sincere devotee of the Lord must be sincerely convinced that simply by the strength of devotional service and the mercy of Lord Krishna, he will achieve everything auspicious in life. One must believe that Lord Krishna is all-merciful and that he is the only real goal of one's life. Such determined faith, combined with a sincere desire to give up sense gratification, will carry one past the obstacles of this world. The words jata, shada, matkata, su are most significant here. By faithful hearing of the mercy and glories of the Lord, one will gradually be freed from all material desire <clears throat> and clearly see at every moment the utter frustration of sense gratification chanting the glories of the Lord with firm faith and conviction is a tremendously powerful spiritual process that enables one to give up all material association. There is actually nothing auspicious. There is actually nothing inauspicious in the devotional service of the Lord. Occasional difficulties experienced by a devotee are due to his previous material activities. 
On the other hand, the endeavor for sense gratification is completely inauspicious. Thus, sense gratification and devotional service are directly opposed to each other. In all circumstances, therefore, remain the Lord's servant. <clears throat> Always be living in His mercy. Then, one will certainly go back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. All glories to the compilers of that purport. All glories to the compilers of that port, purport. All glories to the compilers of that purport. That was the most comprehensive explanation of how to control the mind and how to get attached to devotional service that I've ever read. And I've read it before many times. This is the nature of hearing and chanting. If we're actually hearing and chanting and not just passing the time, filling up the void or whatever, or running away from sense gratification. So if your mind is ever disturbed, Srila Prabhupada told us personally, if your mind gets disturbed for any reason, you sit down wherever you are, pick up any one of my books, turn it to any page, and just read out loud to yourself. And very soon, you will be relieved from whatever it was that was disturbing your mind. That's how powerful these books are. Therefore, whatever our prescribed duties are, we must continue to do them. Whatever life situation providence has put us into, we should cultivate this desire more and more and more. That everything that we're doing is for only this purpose, to be able to develop a taste for hearing about the glories of the Lord. Even our chanting of Hare Krishna to bring us to this point the chanting of Hare Krishna is cheto darpa namarjanam it cleanses the mirror of the heart and as the mirror of the heart becomes cleansed we become more and more attached to Krishna and ultimately we realize that the name of Krishna and Krishna are not different and our chanting turn terms from just a re regulation to us to nam prem nam sankirtan chanting the glories of the Bhag of Krishna through the Bhagavatam even through Bhagavad Gita not even and Bhagavad Gita and Chaitanya Charitamrita Now I have a uh, a time limit that I've imposed upon myself and my loving associates here because they can see my need to uh, recuperate, gain my physical strength so that I can do this every single day. I, I thought maybe I wouldn't do it today to read, but by the grace of my colleagues, my roommates, uh, Radha Raman Prabhu, the owner of this flat that we're staying in, and Abhay Das Brahmachari, my loyal uh, assistant and servant, uh, they told me, go ahead, Maharaj, go ahead, you can do it, because my voice was not so good today. But as Abhay always tells me, once you start to read, Somehow or other, something happens magically and your voice improves. So the same thing happened today. So here we are at that uh, excruciatingly painful and blissful moment when I have to stop reading. We were reading yesterday the Ramayan, how when Rama, out of simply out of virtue of the... Of helping his father to fulfill his vow, 
he gave up everything. And the, the residents of Ayodhya followed him into the forest and they said, we're sorry, you can't go. We're going to all go with you and we'll establish a new Ayodhya over somewhere else and let Kaikeyi, that evil woman who convinced Dashara to send you to the forest, let her be the queen of nobody. <laughs> Maybe some of the trees and plants that can't move, but the rest of us were coming with you. And Ram, Rama, our Lord, was completely unmoved, at least externally. And he said, you, you can't do this because I made a vow. So in this way he showed that his vow to be virtuous, you know, transcended everything. Of course, he was Krishna, you know, in his expansion of Ramachandra, so he can do that. We can't, you know, give up, you know, uh, the loving accompaniment of our associates and devotees for anything. The Lord can do that. Only the Lord can exhibit that level of renunciation, you know. Of course, when the Lord takes the role of his own devotee as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then he can do it. He stayed in Jagannath Puri for three years or two years, two years. And he wanted to go to Vrindavan, but he wouldn't go until he got the permission of his devotees. <laughs> so the association of the devotees is everything. It will give us, it will empower us to be devotees and become more advanced in devotional service and ultimately to become perfect in Krishna consciousness and go back home, back to Godhead. So, do we have any comments in the, in the, uh, from the cyber wallas? A question from Hannah and a few other comments and uh, one other question also. Okay, we're going to handle the questions from cyberspace uh, probably a little short, don't please, don't worry. Here's uh, Rati Manjari. Hi, Veronica, welcome. We are all listening to the reading of the Srimad Bhagavatam 11th Canto, The Essence of Vedic Knowledge. There are no individual readings, but you are most welcome to hear with us. Well, thanks. She's bringing more people into the fold of hearing the Bhagavatam together. Hannah Gill. Hare Krishna Bhakti Hannah. Hare Krishna Srila Gurudev. Please, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I loved hearing today that when one falls down he shouldn't become overly depressed. He should carry on because if he does become overly depressed he won't have the enthusiasm to carry on. I can attest to this, hearing that this happens to other human beings and not just me, and that we should carry on is so encouraging. Hearing definitely helps remind us not to even entertain that mentality because it's selfish. Often when one is in that mentality, they feel all hope is lost. What to speak of enthusiasm? I've heard some people say they don't feel good enough to even associate with devotees because they're so fallen. Is there any way to revive one's eagerness for spiritual life once an individual is there? And is there any way we can prevent this mentality from overco overcoming us through our own personal endeavor? Thank you. Well, I have to say that was a beautiful uh, exposition or description of what we just heard and I can only uh, highly recommend that you read the verses and purports that we just read out loud again and again and again and again and never stop until you get it. That's it. Hear the Gita, hear the Bhagavatam, hear the Chaitanya Charitamrita and never stop. Never think Oh, now I understand. Know that complete attachment 
to these literatures and to the spiritual master who is get, inspiring us to come to that platform of attachment is the all in all. It is a spiritual life. It is spiritual existence. And as we just heard, if one continues without stopping under any circumstances, if one's desire for being a loving service of, of, of the devotee and a loving servant of the devotees of the devotees of Krishna, we will be protected and we will not succumb to this hopelessness, this, as, as was described in the report, chronic depression. Because chronic depression is complete forgetfulness of the fact that we are not the body. The body and the sense and the mind are the causes of suffering. Actually, the body and the material mind are diseases of the soul. So why should we become overly attached to the body and the mind? Not that we can't, not that we shouldn't be, at, we, we heard this, that a devotee feels affection, even for family and friends and everything, but we can't be so overly attached that we forget this basic truth, that the material body and mind and the attachments to the material body and mind, the hammameti, I am this body and any, anything that belongs to this body be, is mine or belongs to me, is the impediment. Vihaya, kamanya, yaksarvam, pumams, charati nishpriya, nirmamo, nirahankara, sashantim harigachtati. This is Krishna at the end of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. As a matter of fact, I think it's text 71. Nirmamo uh, nirahankara. Uh, this mentality of of mine, of me and mine, pertaining to the body, and the material objects that surround the body, uh, are not me. So the way to become over these things, over that level of detachment. That, that puts us into chronic depression when something gets in the way of my possessiveness and my absorption in sense gratification with those possessions and relations, material relations. Uh, Krishna is not telling you to give them up physically, necessarily. That's over attachment to detachment. If you're overly detached, then you will lose your taste also. This is the message of these verses. Rather, we must transfer that attachment to Krishna. We must transfer that attachment to the holy name. We must transfer that attachment to the glories of the Lord that are described in the Gita and the Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and the form of the Lord, and the devotional service to the, all those things. So, an individual personal endeavor is required, but for the right thing. And then Krishna will help you, for sure. Gopal Roy says, Hare Gopal Roy, Hare Krishna. He says, these are such an encourage or such encouraging verses and purports. He's pure and simple to the to the extreme. Thank you, Gopal. And then Ben Shaw, Bhakti Ben, that he's Bhakti Ben from. That's Bhakti Ben from, from Wales. He says, all glories to the compilers of that purport. I second that and third that and fourth that. Sudevi, yes, Maharaj, if we seriously hear, it will sink in. Thank you for igniting our taste 
for Srila Prabhupada's books. Boy, that makes me happier than anything. Yaduatma, Yadutama, Hare Krishna Yadutama. He's my disciple living in Russia. Hare Krishna Gurudev, it, is it correct that the, tr that the true mercy of Krishna is that he allows us to continue hearing and chanting no matter what our position? Yes. Rati Manjari, please bless us all with the prem for the name like you have. <laughs> oh, if only that were true. I'm getting it from you. I'm living vicariously through all of you. I've told you that millions of times. Patrick Knight, how to get free from ulterior motives in devotional service. Sometimes they are so subtle, we are not even aware. Well, it's the same. It's the same answer again and again that, that's told in this verse. Even if you can't do it all the time, don't give up devotional service. Don't give up your devotional service. Don't give up the devotional service that's prescribed to you by your spiritual master, by your local authorities in the Krishna consciousness movement. And Prabhupada said it as simply as it can be said to us. Now you've come to Vaikuntha, just don't leave. Period. Fix your mind on that. Here we have one question from May M. Murani. Thank you, Srila Gurudev. I too am new here to daily readings, but I but am I but I am a consistent one now. My question is, does it matter that I have joined now and not actually heard read the initial cantos? How do I make up for the previous readings? Uh, well, you happy good for you, lucky for you. All of the readings we have for the complete Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita, and they're recorded and 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 uh, compi and uh, and uh, preserved uh, in the YouTube channel of the same name, Daily Readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Go back to the beginning of the Bhagavatam. You can find it very easily. There are nice tabs. Uh, organized with the cantos and the chapters in the cantos and Bhagavad Gita also. And you can read them all the way through. You can hear them all the way through. So welcome aboard. Welcome to the family, to Krishna's family. And that's our life, is to live with Krishna's family and to share the nectar with others and increase the number of Krishna's persons who are consciously Krishna's fam family members. Hare Krishna. That's it for me. I just, by your mercy, I went over the line and I still feel just fine. Thank you, everyone. All glories to Sanatana Goswami and his uh, devotion to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to my, my god brothers, uh, Ridainanda Maharaj, Gopi Paranananda Prabhu, and Dravida Prabhu, who compiled these wonderful purports in the 10th canto after the 14th chapter and the 11th and 12th cantos after Srila Prabhupada departed from us. And do not have doubt that these purports and translations are empowered by Prabhupada. Do not have doubt. It's not different than hearing from Prabhupada. When you speak what Krishna speaks, when you speak what Srila Prabhupada speaks without changing it, even in your own words, you're safe. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. Thank you so much and we'll see you tomorrow night. Same place, same station. The live studios here at 8, flat 8, 126 State Street in Hive, Kent. You're welcome to come as soon as the lockdown is over. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow night. Same time. 7 o'clock UK time. Hare Krishna.